Hello everybody, today I'm gonna to be using Speckle to show the workflow between Revit and eTabs and demonstrate how you can edit your model in one software and then be able to automatically apply those changes to the other software. This way, both softwares will have the latest version of your building, but you won't have to model anything twice. Here I have the default structural project that just comes with Revit, and I wanna design all of this steel using eTabs. So the first thing that we need to do is make an account with Speckle and download the connectors that we're gonna be using. In this case, we're gonna be using the Revit connector and the eTabs connector. I'm not gonna go into that process, but it's totally free. And if you don't know how to do it, I'm gonna link a video in the description that shows you how to do it. So I already have the Speckle plugin installed. So I'm gonna go up here to the Speckle tab and I'm gonna open it with the Revit connector button. Here you can see this is the Revit connector and each one of these items is a different stream or we also call them projects. And if you're doing this for the first time, you might not have any. So just go up here to this create button. We're going to create a new project. I'm going to name it demo. And in the description, this is a demo. And we have created a new stream or project. Now what we want to do is we want to send all of our structural data to this project. So to do that, we have to go into the analytical model of our, of our Revit model here. And all we're going to do is we're going to select everything. I'm going to set the current selection and we're going to send it to Speckle. Um, so while it's sending it, oh, it's already done. <laughs> but if you are a, a structural engineer, then let us know in the comments what you think of the, the analytical model. Do you use it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? You just turn it off. We're not sure if we should continue to use it in the structural workflows that we support or if we should try to support workflows that don't use the analytical model. So now that our data has been sent to Speckle, we can view it in the platform online. Here it is. And you can inspect it if you want to, sort of dig into what all you sent, what the Revit parameters are, and all that good stuff. So we want to go to eTabs now and open a new project. And we want to show the eTabs connector that we have. So if you have it installed, you can see it under tools and the My Speckle connector CSI. And it'll take a second. So here it is. It looks very similar to the one in Revit. And we can see it here is our demo stream that we created. Let's click on it. Here's the exchange tab where we can send data like we just did, or we can receive data. And that's what we want to do. So we hit the receive tab. You can actually see this is what we just sent there. It already has a nice image preview and we can receive this. All right, and so there it is, it's beautiful. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put loads on it and restraints and try to design the steel members. Okay, so while I was modeling, I actually noticed something that's wrong with my model. Uh, you can see here that this member is not connected to this member, and we actually have the same thing over here. Let's go back to Revit, and we can see that, yeah, that's, that's actually how our, our data came in. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this in Revit. I tend to avoid modeling in CSI at all costs. I just don't find it very user friendly at all where I, Revit seems uh, Revit is much nicer to me. But if you wanted to, you could also do this in CSI and it would work totally fine. So now we're going to go back and we're going to send everything again. Now let's go back to CSI and let's keep an eye on these as we go back here and we receive everything again. Do. All right, and you can see that it, it updated our objects. So now I think that I am done with the modeling. I'm gonna go ahead and run this guy. All right, so our analysis is done and we have sizes that we're happy with. And now we wanna get those sizes back into Revit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the eTabs connector back up and instead of receiving, we're gonna send, send everything out. 
And there we go. Now we go back into Revit. And instead of sending in Revit, we want to receive. So I'm going to receive the latest one, which is what we just sent. And boom, you can see that it's updating all of these sizes. And when it's done, we can even spot check a few. Like this guy, which 18 by 35 here is an 18 by 35. This one is a 12 by 19 here. It's a 12 by 19. Let's see, 24 by 94 here. Yeah, 24 by 94. So we have all the beam sizes correct and we didn't have to model anything twice. We just sent over the changes, which is very nice. So now that we've looked at the how on how to do this workflow, I wanna take a step back and talk about the why. Why would we use Speckle to do this type of workflow? One alternative that you may know about is CSI X Revit. And the first thing that comes to mind for me of why to prefer Speckle over CSI X Revit is just the cost. Um, Speckle is free, it's open source. So you could even create the project yourself if you, if you wanted to build it. Um, well, you have to buy licenses for CSI X Revit. In terms of behavior, I found that it works pretty well, except uh, I did have some issues where sometimes frame elements were supposed to be updated, but instead were deleted out of my eTabs model. And sometimes like the example that you're seeing right now, the, uh, there was an error when creating the export file and then it would be unable to be imported into uh, eTabs. And so my model would just wouldn't be updated. Whereas, um, at least in all the cases that I'm aware of, Speckle was able to handle this. However, the eTabs and the SAP2000 connectors are still under active development, so you may run into uh, similar issues using Speckle. The big difference is that Speckle is open source and has a very large community and a great community forum. Uh, the link is in the description of this video, by the way. And there's a very good chance if you post that you are having an issue, someone will respond the same day and the issue will be fixed not much later than that. For me, the biggest reason that I prefer Speckle over any other solution to this issue is that Speckle is much more than just a link between two programs. There's a whole ecosystem around Speckle that I can take advantage of. As a former structural engineer, I would often use Excel for various design tasks. And using Speckle, I can easily receive data in Excel that I've sent from other applications. In the case that you're seeing now, I'm receiving the analytical results from the eTabs model that I just sent to Speckle. And the bi-directional link between the data in Excel and the viewer allows me to easily visualize which member that the analytical results that I'm interested in are actually describing. Lastly, if you know any programming at all, then this should really excite you. All this data is yours to do whatever you want with. For example, at my old company, I used Speckle to build an internal tool to extract Revit data and use it to build shear walls, and it saved me a ton of time. So we have several guides for getting started with programming on top of Speckle, and I'm going to link those below in the description as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to let me know in the comments your opinion of the analytical model in Revit, and also just let me know what you think of this workflow. Could it be useful for you or how we could potentially improve it?